Welcome, my friends, to a new episode of TOEFL ITP Insider. And in this episode, my friends, we're going to talk about adjective, clause, connector, subjects. Now, in the previous episode, we talked about adjective clause connectors. This time, we're going to talk about connectors that can act as subjects at the same time. So let's start. So my friends, let's see some examples of adjective clause connector subjects. Hmm. And here we are. She's using a computer that is in your office. Now, when you think about it, we have the word computer and the word computer is an object. It is a noun used as an object, right? And we know that adjective clauses describe nouns and nouns can be subjects, objects or objects are prepositions. Now, the part that is highlighted in green that is in your office is actually the adjectival clause. Okay, right. Now, when we look at it, we notice that this adjectival clause is made of that. Now, that is a connector and a subject at the same time. So we have that is, is is the verb, that is a connector and subject at the same time. So she's using the computer that is in your office. Good. Now, another example. And here we are. The computer that is in your office looks new. Now, this time the computer, which is a noun, is a subject because we said that nouns can be subjects, objects, or objects of prepositions. Lovely. Now, the adjectival clause is that is in your office. And again, inside it, we have that, which is a connector and subject. And we have its verb, which is is. Right, lovely. Now let's talk about adjective clause connectors that can be subjects at the same time. And the first one is who. The second one is which. And the third one is that. Now we use who for people and we use which for things and we use that for people or things. Okay, wonderful. Now let's see some examples from native speakers using adjective clause connector subjects. Let's go. Now let's go for some examples on who. <laughs> Um, will, anyway, um, <laughs> in, um, in Clapham, where I live, just down the street from there, there are um, some houses, and a man who, one man who lives there in there is an electrician, and he um, used to come and fix the electricity in, in my shop years and years ago in 1970. And he's a beautiful man who came to my party a couple of years ago. The player who scored the least prestige receives a free market tile from the vendor deck whose level matches the current year. Now, some more examples on that. So, if you were a devious and potentially fraudulent businessman that wanted to take advantage of the hype surrounding the Chinese economic miracle, this is what you would do. And we wanted him to have his, you know, his day and his opportunity to do that. This is a man that worked very hard, Louis Souza, yeah. to get answers. Um. And um, so we raised these hundred for this lady that called us and said we want a hundred pullets. And, um, and more examples, my friends, on the use of which. Uh, you'll see that these are other investment opportunities. The S&P 500 is the green thing, which looked like it was doing great for a while. I'd always seen it as a book which said something quite sort of simple. We have to design a bike which is more for the UAE market, you know, which is uh, something you can take out and actually use on the dunes. The thing where, which made computer scientists resented by 
the other lot, which is the computer service providers. Okay, so as we saw in the previous examples from native speakers, that who, which and that can be used as connectors and at the same time subjects. Now, let's get back to the TOEFL ITP exam. How can these be tested in the exam? Let's see. And we've got a question here. It's an MCQ question. And when we read it, it says, is in the garage have three wheels? Now, we notice the garage. But the garage, and we notice has, the garage cannot be the subject for has as a verb. But why? First, it doesn't make sense because the garage cannot have three wheels. The garage has three wheels. So um, meaning wise, it doesn't make sense. But not only that, look at, look at what is before the garage. We have the preposition in, in the garage. And we said before that objects of prepositions cannot be subjects. So now we have a problem because we've got the verb has that doesn't have a subject. That is number one. But this is not the only problem. There is another problem. We've got has and is. And both are verbs. So we've got two verbs in one sentence and no connector. And this is impossible. We cannot have two verbs in one sentence in English language without a connector. So we're looking for a subject for the verb has. And we're looking for a connector. Hmm. So the car. The car can be a subject, but we don't have a connector. So option number one is not right. And then option number two, we've got the car. It can be a subject for has, because you can say the car has three wheels. But what about is? Oh yes, I've got which. The car, which is in the garage, has three wheels. That makes sense. But of course, because the car, I mean, because would not fit in here, because the car is in the garage, has three wheels, that that's that sounds like an incomplete sentence again right um in the car is in the garage now we cannot consider the car a subject here because it's preceded by a preposition then the only option will be the car which that's the correct answer now let's see some sentences and try to correct them together hmm. And number one, let's see whether it's correct or incorrect. He's an aspiring volleyball pro who on the verge of a life-changing decision. Okay. So he's an aspiring volleyball pro who on the verge of a life-changing decision. Let's analyze it. We've got this part first. He's an aspiring volleyball pro. That looks fine. That's correct. He is a subject. Is is a verb. And we've got an aspiring volleyball pro, that's a, a kind of a completion here. Fine, fine, everything is perfect. And volleyball pro, that is a noun. Now, this noun is described by an adjectival clause. Now, let's look inside the components of this adjectival clause. So, we've got, hmm who, and that is a connector and subject at the same time. But wait a minute, after who, we have on the verge. We don't have a verb. Now that is a problem. There is a verb missing, because we're supposed to say something after who. Now, what could be the answer then? The answer could be is. So he's an aspiring volleyball pro who is on the verge of a life-changing decision. Another example. The man which claimed to slay Saul with a sword was actually exaggerating and telling an untruth. Mm. The man which claimed to slay Saul with a sword was actually exaggerating and telling an untruth. Let's see whether this is correct or not. So number one, we've got the man. That's a noun. Okay. And a subject at the same time. Hmm. And this is obviously an adjectival clause. But wait a minute. What's that? 
which is used for things, but we've got the man. That's not a thing. So that's a mistake. Then what we need to do is to change which into who. So it becomes all that. So it becomes the man that claimed or the man who claimed to slay Saul. Lovely jubbly. Another example. Hmm. The suitcase which matched the tuxedo that was on sale. Let's analyze it. So we've got here the suitcase. And this is a what? A noun and subject at the same time. Now we've got which matched the tuxedo. Hmm. And when you look at it, that's an adjectival clause. Fine. And I've got which. That's a subject and connector. I've got match. That's the verb. So fine, fine. Everything is fine. But then we have the tuxedo. And the tuxedo also is a noun, but object this time. And it is also described by another adjectival clause. And let's look inside this adjectival clause. Oh, and we've got that. Okay. So we've got which matched over there. And we've got that was here. So two adjectival clause with two connector subjects and two verbs. Now, this leaves us with one question. Where is the verb for the suitcase? Because the suitcase remains without a verb. Because matched has a subject, which is which. And was has the subject, which is that. But the suitcase has no subject. So this is an incomplete sentence. And in order to fix it, we need to do this. We need to add something here. Something like what? Looked expensive. So when we read all this, it sounds like that. The suitcase, which matched the tuxedo that was on sale, looked expensive. Now, fine. Wonderful. I hope you enjoyed this episode of TOEFL i to be Insider. And please, if you have any questions, leave your questions down there in the comments. I'll be there to respond to you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.